especially on Instagram. I made myself get up at 3.30 a.m. I had to eat this diet I didn't like. I had to go to the gym and work, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why did you start doing this? Of course, it's to get a good body or to get in shape. Time for another ball. Hey, ho here. Man that loves going to the gym and man that loves throwing fitness advice into your face. And there are some things that I've been doing over the last few weeks that I actually genuinely believe have helped me when it comes to lifting moats and my workouts and recovery. So I thought it made sense for me to sit down here and pass these on to you and hope that you listen to said advice and that it helps you as well. But always remember, it's just some idiot talking on your YouTube device. You can do whatever the hell you want. Amazingly too, this video is brought to you thanks to Magic Spoon, the cereal, which will make your eyes go crazy because it's not like ordinary cereal. Now, I've talked about this on my other videos before. I got a bowl of it right here. And I tell you, I prove it right now. It's delicious. But yeah, I have talked about it before, about how I can't even have cereal in the house because I don't have one bowl. I don't have two bowls. I have 79,863 bowls. And by the end of it, I go, Simon, you've just ruined your diet, you gluttonous fat pig. So when I first heard about Magic Spoon, I was like, I've got to get myself some of that. And it's like the powers that be heard me because Magic Spoon got in touch and said, I'll tell you what, if you eat it and you like it, would you talk about it on a video? And I was like, you bet you I will. Because this is the peanut butter flavor. And if you have one serving, it's 170 calories, only 9 grams of fat, 10 grams of carbs, 0 grams of that sugars, and it has 14 grams of protein. And if you're not into peanut butter, you can get it in frosted, you can get it in fruity, you can get it in chocolate. There is just a bunch of options. And I've tried every single one because, again, I am an absolute monster when it comes to this stuff. And I thought every single one was delicious and it had protein in it. Do you hear me? There are some other products out there that call themselves protein whatever and they have no protein in it. Per a bowl, I had 14 grams. This will change my life. It's also keto friendly, gluten free, soy free and grain free. And you know the deal. There's a link in the description below. Use the code Simon. Get $5 off at checkout. And Magic Spoon are so confident you'll like it. If you don't, they'll give you your money back. So click the link, use the code. And again, I ain't joking around. This is really good cereal that you can replace with other cereal and it's healthier for you. I mean, you can't eat 78,000 bowls that I talked about earlier, but can you have more than you would usually? Yes, you can, because it's basically healthy, delicious cereal. This has absolutely made my year. But yep, this is five ways to improve your workouts that nobody does, but of course they do, but it makes a better YouTube title, but you should. Number five is cold showers. Now this all of a sudden seems to have become the topic of the day, although it's always been super popular, because I started doing them for two very ridiculous reasons. I think I started doing them back in July just because I was sort of aching and I felt kind of like, oh man, I need some help. So I thought, well, you ice to sort of sort out an injury. Why the hell wouldn't you take a cold shower? And then I read that The Rock did it. So I thought, well, I'll take that as a double way to, <laughs> to justify what I'm doing. And then I saw Chris Bumstead, obviously, you know, professional bodybuilder taking ice baths. And that's like, right, I'm going to keep it up. And I cannot tell you how damn amazing a cold shower is. Now, it's not easy. Of course it's not. You turn it on, you're probably just like, oh, blah, 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 what's going on? And it's absolutely freezing. So as a quick few tips, make sure you control your breathing. And after a while, you do get used to it. And you want to aim for around about, well, you can do whatever you want. You can start with 20 seconds. I like to aim for about five minutes but the amount of benefits that it gives you when it does come to recovery and priming you for another workout are absolutely ridiculous like i promise you this every time i have one and i come out my mood feels like it's been boosted obviously that's going to help you in many ways as well and as it turns out there is a science behind it so basically what happens is, is that noradrenaline gets released into your system and what that essentially does is allowed you to increase your oxygen intake so all of a sudden you feel like you're on top of the world like think about when you jump into the sea right you jump into the cold sea and you're like oh but when you get out you kind of feel invigorated it's the same kind of a thing so it's a really great thing to do in the morning especially if you do wake up tired give yourself a quick blast of a cold yes it will start for a little bit but the benefits you get afterwards actually do help it also apparently helps your hair but i'm not going to comment about that am i because that would be absolutely ridiculous but i will comment on the fact that it will also help your skin because when you take a super duper warm shower you actually get rid of some essential oils on your body and you open up the pores so much that you can kind of clog them with other stuff and your body freaks out like no 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 and you can get spots or blemishes or whatever and I suffer with that a lot so to do anything that's going to circumnavigate that is suddenly something I want to do and the more important one the one I want to stress the most ironically is the fact it will reduce inflammation it ties into that key word there when you are training you are putting your body under stress don't forget when you're breaking the muscle down you're basically kicking your body's ass so anything you can do to reduce that inflammation before you go to the gym again is going to help you rest it's going to help you recover and it's going to help you grow bigger again it ties into the whole ice thing we were just talking about when you're injured oh my poor shoulder why do you ice it to take the swelling down to get rid of the inflammation and it's the same here it's just on a lesser scale so seriously if you're going to do one thing today 
be a nice person. But if you're going to be two things, make sure you start taking cold showers. Number four is sports massages. Now, I totally understand that sports massage costs a lot of money. But even if you can just get enough cash together to do it once a month, I really do think the benefits are kind of crazy, especially once more if you are really going at it in the gym. Because the first thing it's going to do ties into the whole cold shower thing is that, yes, it will reduce inflammation and it will get rid of those stress knots that you've got that will allow your body to recover quicker. And the reason I'm sort of focusing on things like this is because as I do get older, I'm realizing that longevity is actually the most powerful tool that we have. So you're like a spruce 22-year-old right now. You're like, I don't need no cold shoulders. I don't need no sports massages. I don't know what's going on with your voice, but my word, your balls have dropped. Eventually, it does all catch up to you because once more, you are putting your body through the ringer. So at some stage, you have to start taking care of it better. And the earlier you do that, the more longevity you're going to have. It also increases your range of motion. It also increases your flexibility. And that's going to help in the gym as well because you'll be training in a better way, not sort of like getting really, really cramped up. But also also, you're going to break up scar tissue and scar tissue sucks. But maybe even more crucially than all of that is that let's say your sports massage goes for 30 minutes. Now, look, a sports massage is kind of uncomfortable because you're basically paying someone to smack you with a hammer, although somehow their hammer is their fist or their hand or whatever. But you can just chill out for 30 or so minutes. Chill out is probably not the right word, but you can. You don't have to worry about anything else. You just lay down and you let somebody work on your body. You'll go into the gym all the time and spending 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, whatever the hell it may be, kicking your own body's ass. Why don't you give it a little bit of a respite on the other end? Number three is wearing tight clothing. That's right. Finally, I am telling you the dream. I am telling you to go to Gap and buy those baby Gap clothes and run around with the extra medium. Now, this one is a little bit of bro science, I understand, but I do think that it works. Because do not forget, while it's cool to wear a compression top in the gym because it shows off all your muscles, also, it's pretty good when you do have a few injuries or minor knocks. Now, I want to underline the fact that I'm saying minor knocks here and niggles, not that you've broken your arm. But of course, it's going to add support to your workout. But more importantly, once you have come out the workout, change your top, don't do it in a sweaty thing. If you then put that compression vest or compression leggings or whatever the hell it may be, or whatever the hell the niggle you have is, the fact you're compressing it means once again, you're going to be trying to take the swelling down because never forget when you injure yourself what does everyone tell you to do rice and that stands for rest obvious one ice we've talked about it compression and elevation now, elevation you can do whatever the hell you want but compression is a little bit harder so if you are genuinely thinking man you know i'm not so beaten up that i can't go to the gym but i've got this just little pain in my elbow whatever make sure that you are compressing it you can do that in the gym once again in order to support yourself and give yourself a little bit more confidence but afterwards especially when inflammation is probably going to go kapow because of what you've done make sure you're wearing that compression vest or whatever the hell it may be again. There are reasons for these things. That's where they came from. It's just because we're human beings and we absolutely love the bicep vein. We're like, my gosh, the less clothes I wear, the cooler my vein's gonna be. And that was never really the point. I mean, it's great that it's happened. And let's face it, we all do it. But there is a much better advantage you can take for this and I implore that you do so. And there are also some studies out there too that say they will help your next workout. But that probably comes back down to the fact that you've recovered quicker because you have got over these little niggles and therefore it stands to reason when you go back in, you are actually going to feel better because you literally do feel better. Number two is to distract yourself during cardio. This comes down to a few articles that I read recently where it said that when you are doing cardiovascular activity, you need to be dialed in was the term that it used. And I was like, no, you don't. If you are doing HIIT cardio, high intensity training, you know, so you're going absolutely crazy and you're going all out, putting in 100%, then yes, you need to be focused. Of course you do, because it requires a level of concentration that you're not going to get if you're doing something else. But if you were doing steady state cardio when you just jump on a treadmill or whatever for 45 minutes to 60 minutes and just go like this at a moderate pace you don't need to be overly focused on it of course you don't to tie into some of the people we were talking about earlier chris bumpstead plays his nintendo switch that's what he does when he's doing cardio i sometimes write scripts i sometimes watch wrestling sometimes i reply to emails as long as you're keeping the pace up and as long as you're ensuring that you have to put obviously some effort into it but that is the best thing about steady state cardio you just put on 45 minutes 60 minutes whatever the hell you want to do and then you just try and zone out now if all of a sudden you catch yourself and you're barely doing anything then yes more shame on you but what usually happens with steady state cardio is that you get into a routine and you kind of just doing it almost subconsciously without even realizing it so absolutely read a book watch some netflix watch some youtube videos why the hell wouldn't you but i read these articles like what do you mean if you're doing sort of long ass cardio you need to be all like Rrr. no one's going to be able to do that you're going to drive yourself nuts and you are allowed to give yourself a break that's the other thing everyone treats working out like oh it's a hard labor of love no it's not you can just be passionate about it and dare i say it tying into number one which i'm going to do as a segue flip and enjoy your workout because you see it all the time 
same. Especially on Instagram. I made myself get up at 3.30 a.m. I had to eat this diet I didn't like. I had to go to the gym and work, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why did you start doing this? Of course, it's to get a good body or to get in shape. But whatever happened to the original point of doing anything in life, which is that you get something else out of it. If you're not enjoying your workouts, absolutely stop doing it. That's the best way to improve your workout there is. And I still see it all the time. Simon, I don't like lifting weights. What should I do? Stop lifting weights. There's other ways in order to get a muscular fillet. I mean, weightlifting is the best one. But there's a bunch of people out there that don't weight lift and they still look like they lift weights because they're doing other things. You can go for a run. You can do rock climbing. You can do wrestling. I say this all the time, but it's true. There is not a one-stop shop to getting in shape. And there is not a one-stop shop to being a muscular person. There just isn't. And I just do not feel like it's said enough. I always feel, again, it always comes across like it's a stress and it's a hard day. If you are doing that and it's not just a one-off, you absolutely need to retroactively change your diet, your training, your focus, whatever it may be. Because we're going to be dead one day. We are. We're going to be dead. And you don't want to look back and, you know, check your abs out and be like, well, I'm sweet that I've got these abs. But I had to sort of drag myself through all this hell. It's just not the way you want to go from A to B. Don't listen to anybody else. I mean, listen to anybody else if they're educating you. But don't listen to anybody else if saying you must do this and you really don't enjoy it. Figure out what works for you. Figure out what floats your boat. Figure out what gets your brain interested and go down that route and sure maybe it means you don't do need to change your goal or maybe you do get into lifting weights if that's not your thing because you're just so obsessed with being a big person and then when you do start to see that muscle mass add on your frame then that's where you get your passion from but passion is massively important and i wanted to put it in here because i'm sick and tired of all this hardship that comes with lifting weights lifting weights is great and I want to champion it. So there you go, five ways that you can improve your workout that I bet you're not doing. Although, of course, I already know the comments because some of you will be doing it. But hey, man, I don't care. Just comment. As long as you comment, YouTube loves it. It helps the algorithm. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding, so you know when other videos going live. There is another video on the screen. Why don't you give it a click? YouTube loves that as well. I'm on Cameo. If you want me to shout in your face via the mobile phone, I also have Instagram and Twitter at Simon316. I have a Patreon, patreon.com for the Simon316 if you want to support the channel that way and you get a bunch of other rewards. You can see when you go to the page. I mean, Greg, do sets new cookbook you can check that out in the description below and there'll be a code for you to get some money off simon.bigcartel.com for merchandise there is a lot of promotion at the end of these videos you take care of yourself and i will see you soon